Hi everyone. So today we will be discussing regarding the second part of the neuroanatomy. In the previous video we discussed the first part of the neuroanatomy. So in this second part of neuroanatomy we will mainly focus on the glial cells. In the previous video we mainly talked about the neural cells. There are two types of neural cells such as neurons as well as glial cells. So once again I will have a quick review. So in the previous video we talked about the neural cells, right? Neural cells are generally categorized into two types. One are neurons and the next group of cells are glial cells. Glial cells. Right? So neurons we discussed in the previous video we discussed regarding the structure of the neurons, types of neurons and the functions of the neurons, right? And today we will be discussing, we will be mainly focusing on glial cells, mainly there are five types of glial cells, we will be discussing mainly on one type of glial cell. So coming to the glial cells, the first type of glial cells are astrocytes. Right? And next, microglial cells. And third, oligodendrocytes. Fourth, squan cell. And the last group are ependymal cells. So there are generally five groups of glial cells. One are astrocytes, microglial cells, oligodendrocytes, squam cell and ependymal cell. So uh, today we will be discussing regarding the astrocytes. And uh, each cell we will be discussing in each video in a detailed fashion. So once again what are actually glial cells? Glial cells are the supporting cells for neurons. They perform a function called as supporting function for the neurons. For suppose, if there is any starvation for the neuron, immediately glial cells get activated and help the neuron to recover the problem called as starvation. For suppose, if neuron gets an injured or any inflammation occurs for this neuron, immediately the glial cells get activated to perform the immune response or inflammatory action. So in this way, glial cells perform a supporting framework or a supporting function. They play, mainly play a role in supporting work for this neurons so this video will be talking mainly on astrocytes the structure of the astrocytes and the function right so we will be focusing on today astrocytes so first of all i draw the structure of the astrocytes and once again this is just a functional diagram not an anatomical diagram so the structure of astrocytes, this is the central nucleus or the cell body or the soma or also called as the pericarium, right? So this is the central nucleus of the astrocyte and next, this is the cell body and this red color thing which I have drawn is the central nucleus and next it contains Peripherally, it has many processes in this fashion, right? Peripherally, this astrocyte has many processes. And these processes are divided profusely. So this is the structure of the astrocyte. Astrocyte contains a cell body. The other name for the cell body is soma or perikaryon are also called as cyton and peripherally there are several processes and finally these processes are getting bifurcated, right? So these bifurcations uh, of these processes contain a specific unique structure. This unique structure is called as foot pad or also called as end foot because this is the end of the process. And to the end of the process, there is a structure which looks like a foot. So this is called as end foot.
so this is the exact structure of the astrocyte so once again astrocyte contains cell body or cyton or also called as perichorion and next centrally it contains nucleus peripherally this astrocyte or peripherally this cyton contains several dendritic processes finally this processes at the end of this process there are foot like structures right at the end of this processes there are foot like structures these foot like structures have a great importance i'll be explaining in a minute so these foot like structures are called as end foot so now we'll deal with the functions of astrocytes so as i said astrocytes include under the group called as glial cells so how these astrocytes are helping the neurons or how these astrocytes perform a supporting framework for neuron we'll be going with that so now the first function of astrocyte is scaffold it performs scaffold for the nervous system what is exactly meant by scaffold first suppose uh, this is the central nervous system right right this is the cerebral hemisphere and this is the midbrain right this is the cerebral hemisphere this is the midbrain this is the pons medulla oblongata continuing down as spinal cord and posteriorly we have the cerebellum so for suppose this is the central nervous system and once again i am saying this is just a functional diagram this is the central nervous system how these astrocytes form a scaffold of the central nervous system so this is the astrocyte with several process and this is one more astrocyte several processes this is another astrocyte with again several branches and this is one more astrocyte with several branches there are millions and millions of astrocytes present in the central nervous system and one more thing is that as i said uh, the end of each process contains end foot right in this way so these astrocytes they perform or they form a scaffold of the entire nervous system what is meant by scaffold scaffold in the sense a network right a network of entire central nervous system so these astrocytes of may, many may, there are many in number so these astrocytes all of them uh, form a network a profuse network of the entire central nervous system forming a supporting framework right they are forming a supporting framework of the entire central nervous system so this function is called as scaffold what is exactly meant by scaffold scaffold means these astrocytes as they are many in number in the central nervous system these astrocytes bind to each other with their foot processes right they bind to each other with their foot processes and finally form a network of the entire central nervous system the why the network is exactly formed the network is formed because it has to protect the and central nervous system structurally right so it forms a structural framework of the entire central nervous system by formation of these uh, interlinked networks so this function is called as scaffold and the next function is glial scar the second function of the glial cells is glial scar what is exactly meant by glial scar for suppose in the central nervous system if there is any injury for suppose if there is any injury of the central nervous system within the central nervous system if there is any injury immediately all these astrocytes These are the foot processes of the astrocytes. 
which I named it as end foot so what exactly is happening is if there is any injury in the central nervous system immediately around this injured area all these astrocytes get gathered and they form the network around this injured area and f uh, stop the bleeding right so they all gather towards this injury area and next along this injury they form the network and with their foot process they completely seal this injured area so this formation is called as glial scar so it looks like as if there is a scar in the injured area so that is the reason which we uh, why we call it as glial scar and next the third function is homeostasis what is exactly meant by homeostasis and how these astrocytes perform this function so for suppose this is the astrocyte containing several foot oh sorry branch it is profusely branched containing several dendritic processes and obviously it also has foot process right so how this performs homeostasis basically these astrocytes inside this perikaryon or cyton it contains a rich amount of hydrogen ions there are rich amount of hydrogen ions which are embedded within this cyton for suppose when there is a deficiency of hydrogen ions in the body immediately the hydrogen ions from this astrocytes leave the astrocytes and enter into the body right for suppose if there is uh, metabolic acidosis during metabolic acidosis uh, the there is an increase in number of h plus ions right so when there is an increase in number of h plus ions immediately the extra h plus ions enter back into astrocytes so in this way there is a flux of hydrogen ions during some conditions there is influx of hydrogen ions during the when hydrogen ions get concentration gets increased in the body fluids so in this way they maintain homeostasis and final function of this is one of the important function it is blood brain barrier astrocytes act as blood brain barrier what is exactly meant by blood brain barrier for suppose this is in this is a blood vessel and inside the blood vessel the blood is flowing right so as you know blood is composed of many proteins and also fibers so for suppose proteins such as albumins globulins right these are albumins globulins present in the blood right generally when we uh, see the microscopic structure of the wall of this blood vessel there are minute pores which are present within this blood vessel there are small minute pores so through these minute pores sometimes the micro molecules pass through this minute pores outside right for suppose here some molecule is coming like this so this molecule when it sees a minute pore it immediately passes out it's not a problem because uh, there must be filtration of the blood right for suppose if macro molecules such as albumins and globulins also pass out to that hole or perforation there is a deficiency of such molecules within the blood right when there is a deficiency of such molecules within the blood there may be many metabolic disorders so to prevent this these astrocytes wherever there are perforations immediately these astrocytes move towards that perforated areas with their foot processes they close these perforations
for suppose these are a couple of perforations which I am showing here immediately the astrocytes are pulled towards these perforations and with their food process they close this perforated area so that no protein or macromolecule goes leaves out of the blood vessel or the vascular system so this function is called as the blood brain barrier so this mainly occurs for the blood vessels that are supplying to the brain and the spinal cord mainly the central nervous system so these are the four functions of the glial cells this topic is mainly regarding the astrocytes and the next video will be regarding how the myelin sheath is formed by squam cells as well as oligodendrocytes. Thank you.